Hi, this is Dror Moshe Kasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. In the days of uh, Bet HaMikdash, when Bet HaMikdash was built, so the Kohanim and the holy servants over there, they had the ability to take the light of Hashem and to channel it into the right places, into, into the, to the good. Let's say, to, 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 to paint with the light of Hashem to the good. And, and what does that mean? The, the Creator's light is a simple light. That's what it's written. Opashut, a simple light is coming out from the Creator and the ones that are serving the Creator they're receiving that simple light and they are expressing it out to the world if I want to ask you who is Hashem or in any situation that you will go and talk to someone about Hashem, about the Torah, about the Holy Land from which world of of knowledge you you will speak from the one that you took learned purchased in in your lifetime from the experience of your life you heard few people talking about the holy land about the torah you heard some classes you had some conversations you had your parents talking about it you read in a book you saw a video like what Whatever came to you, you had a dream on it, your life experiences developed and built a certain structure of understanding. And this is today your, um, your, your knowledge. And with that you go and you explain it to other, other people. So now, for an example, if you don't know what you're talking about, like you read on Israel from books, but you've never been there. You heard about the Holy Land from people that were wrong about their understanding about the Holy Land. And you don't really have a clue about what is the Holy Land because you received your information from sources that are not reliable. Just ignorant people were talking to you about Israel or about the Torah or about Hashem. So if you will go and explain about Eretz Israel to other people from your lack of understanding, what that actually will happen from your lovely explanations is, is a ruin. You're going to destroy it. Because you don't know what you're talking about. And you're going and spreading that ignorance between other people that will fail even more than you because of your lack of knowledge. And allowing yourself to go and guide other people with that lack of knowledge. So you see that the Creator gave permission and you will affect those people's life with your understanding, coming and talking and preaching and you don't know what you're talking about, putting them in darkness without understanding even what you're doing to them. Now, the Creator gave the permission to us, to every individual, to go and to explain the light of Hashem, the light of the Creator, the light of the Torah to the world even if they don't know what they're talking about. So in the days of the Temple, the Holy Servants, the Kohanim, they were very close to Hashem. They had very deep spiritual understandings. They saw Hashem while they were getting into the Azara and when they were serving in such, with all their power, with such passion. So they were very close to the fire. They saw the the miracles and the wonders that would take place all the time. At least 10 miracles would happen 24 hours a day in the, in the Holy Temple. So they saw the wonders, they saw the ability, the power of the Creator that was above nature, that He could do things that like, whoa, the bread, the Holy Bread was, was always warm. This is something they saw, they felt the bread with their eyes, with their hands. They saw the pillar of smoke was rising in a straight line. There was never no fly that came into the, into the temple. They saw those things that were against nature. They saw that the fire would come from heaven to, to take and to eat the sacrifices. They saw those things. So they had a very deep understanding about who the Creator is. 
And when they were explaining to the people how to believe and how to worship and how to follow and how to connect themselves to Hashem, they were painting, illustrating, carving it, describing it in a right way into the hearts of their students, of the people that came to, to learn from them, from the Kohanim. But from the moment of destruction, the moment of the Churban of Beit HaMikdash, that we don't have the Temple anymore, and we still have this wonderful permission to deliver the light of Hashem to people, but we lost that closeness, so people can ruin, so people can damage. And when people are going and teaching and preaching, and they don't know even the basics, for an example, people that... And when I'm saying it, I am literally saying it only as an example, because from the other side you can see that it can be even worse, and I'll explain. If today, rabbis that are English speakers and they're holy people, they're fantastic, amazing people and trying to teach and they are themselves are struggling with the language, the barrier of the language is such a huge and thick and hard barrier to cross, to deal with, that when they're teaching, even if they feel very connected to what they're teaching, they are so disconnected because of their barrier of the language, because they still need to, to break their mind, to break themselves, to understand the real meaning, something that would be much easier and flowing for an Israeli guy that speaks Hebrew. And doesn't make that Israeli guy, and that's why I was careful to say it's an example. Because also in Israel you can find rabbis and teachers and people that don't have no common sense and no logic and will talk basically 99% nonsense. The only true thing that they will say will be the verses, but also going to misinterpret those verses. So it's not like, okay, let's learn from Israelis and not from English speakers. But just to understand how hard it is for us today in this generation to learn, this is one thing, because Okay, who is that person that really is qualified to teach? Who are those righteous ones that have the ability really to transfer the light of Hashem as it is, as Hashem wants it to be said? Because everyone can say whatever they want. Everyone can describe holiness as something else. And every as number of people, that's the number of opinions that you'll have. And the main thing that... I think that we should pay attention is on words that are coming out from our mouths. How much we should be careful when we're describing um, who Hashem is and what the will of the Creator is all about. And to understand that by being positive and being good and really connecting ourselves to the good that it's basically for sure Hashem, the kindness and like that the Creator told us that we should become like Him as much as we can to be like Him in His midot, in the behaviors, in the manners, in the attributes. That He's kind, we should be kind as well. That He's merciful, we should be merciful. We should always have mercy. That He's generous, we should be generous as well. When you are following those lines, those guiding lines, those good attributes, you're in His side. When you see that anger is leading you, when you see that cruelty is leading you, that jealousy is leading you, so then you, you can tell very easily that you are disconnected. The problem is coming when a person is in the twilight zone. The twilight zone is a zone that can be affected uh, by darkness and, and by impure intentions for many reasons. Some of them can be desire for honor. He wants to be a rabbi, he wants to teach, he wants other people to listen to him. And from the other side, that he's afraid to lose. That he doesn't want to be not important or not to be heard or to be disqualified. And then he will start making up theories and stories and whatever. In any case, when you open your mouth, you have a responsibility. And when a person really understands that, so then he becomes to be a real Yerashamayim. Then his fear from heaven means something. 
When a person understands that he is important in Avodat Hashem, that his Avodat Hashem is important, that he worth something, that his words are powerful, and he takes responsibility on that, then he becomes Yerat Shamayim Amiti. This is the beginning of Yerat Shamayim. You can see people that are running after, after Torah or Mitzvot, they will go and they will buy the most expensive Arba Minim, for kinds that we need to buy for Sukkot, and they will abuse their wives to clean the house for Pesach, and they will push in line um, when they want to get an, uh, the flight to Uman because Rabbi Nachman of Breslev is such a holy, righteous man, and they will kill for, for you to give charity to their rabbi or to the institutes that they're receiving 49% to their pocket if they're going to sign you on, on a monthly donation to those organizations. And they literally will kill you for that merit that you'll have to give them 49% to their pocket. And you can see people like that that are wrapped with Torah mitzvot, so to speak, so to call that craziness of today and in the end of the day they don't have your they don't have real they don't have real feel from heaven they don't even count Hashem they just found a place to hide in to live their life they have their zone it's okay no one is bothering them they can justify themselves and to find excuses for their behaviors and bad manners in every situation and in every argument and it's a very easy way to, to erase the Torah without, without being rebuked on it. Like they can stay who they are, but pretending that it's Hashem that is sending, like they can wave the, way, the, the, the flag of Hashem, say, no, I'm doing it for Hashem, I'm doing it for Hashem. Today I spoke with a person that is dealing with two thieves, two thieves that are trying to steal money from him. And they're dragging him from one Beit Din to another Beit Din, from one Jewish court to the next, and making up stories and lying and, and, and doing whatever they can. And even the judges in those Beit Bate Dinim, in those courts, are saying to him that he's the person that money, hundreds of thousands of dollars have been stolen from him. The judges over there are telling him, listen, but those people, when they have money, they're very generous, they're good people. So like... How do you know that they're very generous when they have money, if <laughs> you haven't received money from them? We're talking about people that are bribing judges and, and paying to, to, you know, supporting institutes and whatever. And in the name of religion, they're doing horrible things, stealing money from, from simple people. And, and, and the world is, is silent, the world is, is quiet. Now the problem is, okay, you say, okay, you had a problem, deal with it. Okay, I understand. You don't want to put your head into, into this sick bed to say, okay, I'll go and fight for the world. I understand it. But our problem is that when we are allowing people like those, and we might find ourselves also in those situations that we're not perfect, that we're not righteous, that we're not right, that we're also pushing to achieve our goals, in relationship, in Shalom Bayit, with your wife, it's very easy to like, but what do you want? It's Hashem, it's the Torah, it's the Halakha, you must keep, you must do this, that. Children education, exactly the same. Must force you to do this, my fo and, and you, you're allowing yourself to be mad, to be crazy, to be vicious, to be cruel to your children, because you don't have the power to deal with them, so you lock them in the best yeshiva, whatever, you're even ready to pay the tuition for their learning. And okay, at least like, and you stay stuck with your bad attributes, with your bad behaviors, bad manners. You're not working on yourself and you just justify for yourself. Like, okay, no, I'm doing the best. My kids are left. You put your kids in the hand of someone. You don't know who he is. You don't know how they're being abused over there. You don't know how, they're, how much they're being bullied and suffer over there in that yeshiva. Yeshiva, what is yeshiva? Yeshiva, that is the solution for your, for your life. I have five boys, they all were in yeshiva, they were all in religious kindergarten. I, I, I regret on every day that my kids were not homeschooled. On every day that my kids were out of the house, I regret. Every day. And they learned Mishnayot, and they learned Gemarot, and they learned Chumash, and they learned Halakha. I say, what do you want? I want them to be human. 
I want them not to be bullied and not to bully the other people. I want them to understand kindness and sensitivity. I want them to learn how to play, how to smile, how to shake hands. Go shake a hand of a, of an, of, of a chassid. Go in the street, try to shake a hand of, of a child, of a chassid. He doesn't have a hand. They don't have hands to shake. To, Hi, how are you? Shalom Aleichem. Give me your hand. Like, he doesn't know what to do with you. He's afraid to shake your hand. Like, that's a man. That's a man. That's who you, you, you raise. Afraid of his own shadows. Doesn't know how to deal. How to say Shalom. Shalom Aleichem. How are you? Say Baruch Hashem. Chazdei Hashem. Cannot communicate. Don't know how to talk. Don't know how to smile. Don't know how to, how to laugh. No. They've been educated. What they've been educated? To be terrified. They've been terrorized. They, it's not gentle. They're not gentle. They're traumatized. They're scared. They're not themselves. And this is why the numbers of children that are falling off the derech, that are falling from serving Hashem, are, are, is enormous, is huge. It's not true. They're not falling from the derech. They were never on the path. They're just now understanding that they don't want to live under the terror that was the path. It doesn't mean that that was the real will of Hashem. If my father thought that it was, it's not there. It's not, it, it's, that, that's not an evident that it really was the path of Hashem. We must be aware to who we are, and especially as parents, as rabbis, as teachers, as adults, as people with responsibility, that even if we are pushing someone to some way that seems to be good, or at least we're using good words for that, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's the right way. You're teaching everyone that they need to be a pattern. Everyone should be the same. Everyone should be similar. Different people, different talents, different moods, different abilities, different, different moods in the houses, different parents, different brothers, different neighborhoods, different grandparents. Erasing the identity of people, it's for sure not the will of the Creator. To put everyone in the same, in the same um, platform, that everyone will look the same, everyone should come in the same hour, everyone, all this school system that becomes to be today the yeshiva system, it's basically the same. 200 years ago, it wasn't the system. The system that we know today that guys are going and learning in yeshiva, that's not the real Polish system or, or, the, or, or, or the, the, the Deutsch system of Jewish Hasidish in, 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 in Poline or in Hungary, in Hungary or, 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 or the Litvish that lived in Germany or whatever. That's not the real tradition. It's something that's been developed in the last 70 years, in the last 100 years. The survivors that came to the U.S. and the survivors that came to the, to the Holy Land of Israel started to establish systems. And okay, maybe from good intentions, maybe wonderful things they had in mind, they were willing to do something great. But in reality, we see that it didn't work. People are coming to me when they're 30 years old, 40 years old, coming to consult about Shalom Bait, about their relationship with their wives. And I see little kids, seven years old, sitting in front of me, have not been matured, never grew up. He is 40, he's got a long beard, he learned for years, and I'm talking to a 15-year-old kid. He's not developed, he doesn't know anything about life, he doesn't know his wife, he never met his wife. He doesn't know the color he lo she, his li wife she loves, he doesn't know what she rather, what she prefer, he doesn't know what she feels. He he never spoke with her, she never spoke with him. They never sat together. They don't know anything. They never met. They've just been pushed into marriage in a very, very early age. And that's it. And now from now on, that's it. Poverty, best, 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 uh, best recipe for life. And that's it. Going to the Gemach and going to this Gemach and receiving uh, meat and wine from that Gemach. And that family is inviting them in the first year for Shabbat and going into the system. It sounds like a, like a Pink Floyd the song, not like the world of Yeshiva. Sorry. It's not the will of Hashem. If it would be the will of Hashem, people would be happy. 
over there. You would see shiny, happy people walking, smiling to each other, all blooming, all rising, all hugging each other with love. Modest, only men hugging men. Yeah, today you can find that also. Number of people that are being destroyed sexually, being abused in all those systems. What do you want? What are, you, what are we talking about? Talking about purity. And children are being molested in, in hundreds and in thousands. And putting end to their lives because they don't know and not being guided how to deal with the trauma and not, don't know and not being guided on how to deal with their pain and with the confusions. And no one cares. Things we're not talking about here in this place. Things we're not talking about in our community. Things cannot be discussed. Sorry, I'm not going to speak about those topics. Sorry, don't talk to me about that rabbi. He's a wonderful rabbi. And everyone are silent. You know why? Everyone afraid. Afraid of what? Afraid to, to deal with, with people that are bullying them. Afraid of rabbis. Afraid of people. Why? Why? Why to be afraid? Today, we drove to Jersey City. We parked the car. Some young person came out of nowhere after we finished parking the car. Everything was perfect. We're going out from the car. Kids went out of the car. Suddenly this person is coming to me and telling me, you hit my car, you, you banged my car. I told him I haven't. He said, yes, I saw and I saw that you saw that you banged my car. I told him I haven't, I haven't touched your car. He said, yes, you did. I told him, okay, let's see what happened. We're going to the back of my car, to the front of the car that he's claiming to be his car, it was not his car in the end even. And he's telling me it's a new car and just hit my car, you probably scratch it and he's looking, nothing, I haven't touched his car. It, unfortunately for him it was really a new car, not his. And he's telling me, look, I, 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 I saw that you hit my car, I told him, listen, what do you want? He said, I want, and then he went and then he came back after a second and said, look, my cousin told me that you need to pay me $50 for the damage. I told him, okay, listen. My lawyer will talk to your lawyer, is it okay? He said, look, it's a, it's, a, it's a new car, my cousin said you need to pay me. I told him, listen, so call your cousin, let's talk, let's speak to your cousin, what's the problem? Like, I haven't touched your car. And while he's talking and trying to, to, to like, just to steal $50 from us on, on based on nothing, and to bully us in the middle of the street. We went back to the place that we were walking into, and that's it, we closed the door behind and went. After a while he went and someone else got into the car and drove away and <laughs> that's the story. Now, everyone can come and claim, everyone can bully you, everyone can threaten you. Now, is it a reason to take out $50 from your pocket, $50 that you worked for? So now, if there is a risk for your life and you're really terrified and you are in a danger, understand, it's better to stand naked and to, swear you, to save your life. And if really there's a threat to the life of your children, but if that guy is just rude and acting rude and he's a, 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 I don't know how to describe him, just a thief, just a thief, with no respect, with no dignity, with no honor, just coming to steal, to hustle you, to take $50 out of your pocket for no reason, making up stories because of his cousin told him to take, I'm just doing what my cousin told me to do. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not working for your cousin. You maybe work for your cousin, I don't work for your cousin, and you go. So just to surrender because you are terrified from that person, that's not the will of Hashem. The will of Hashem is not that we will be nation of cowards, of terrified people that are lost and surrender. That's not humility. Okay, here I'll get you in playing humble. That's not humility. To pay him, that's not humility. Because if you paid him $50, now he knows that every Orthodox Jew is a potential $50 or $100 if he's really hungry that day or want to buy drugs or whatever. $50, $100, $200, whatever. Okay, now you, by being so terrified and scared, open the door for him to go and to hurt other people. 
But by standing in front of him and showing to him that his way is a joke, and that you're not going to surrender to a behavior like that, and that you're not going to let him terrorize you, by that you close the door from him to bully other people and to take advantage of people that would have given him the $50 because they were too scared or they didn't went with their bodyguard or whatever, like I'm going surrounded 24-7. Bottom line, if you're protecting yourself by that, you're protecting the world. If you're not protecting yourself, you're allowing the world not only to destroy you, also to destroy everyone else that is following you in the same path. Innocent people that are walking in the streets cannot go safe today. Why? Because we allow evil people to go and to crush our minds and to destroy our self-esteem. And to ruin us and to kill us for no reason. And it's worthy for you to die on Kiddush Hashem, to sacrifice yourself and to die for the respect and honor of the real will of the Creator than to live your life as a coward, as a liar. Because at least you're going to die for a good cause, for a purpose. And no one even needs you to die. You won't die. You're just terrified and you think you're going to die from every situation. But in reality, nothing is really terrorizing you. Things that you should deal with are things that will build you and will design the world in a better way. And when we're going to do those things, we're going to see, you know, I'm speaking to thousands of people. But in the beginning I was talking to, to a small group of people. I was teaching two guys and then it became a table and we were sitting six, seven people in that table. And after that it was an English program in Israel and some more guys joined and it became 20 people. And in the end it was 50 people in that yeshiva. And then I left and we were start recording the videos and we opened the Muna Center, first the Muna Center in Jerusalem. And suddenly we had hundreds of people following us online. And you see that those circles are growing and growing. And new people are joining. We have more subscribers every day. And every one of those people is, he, he feels so connected to this message. And he feels like, thank you. Thank you for finally hearing the voice of truth. Voice that gives you the strength to be who you are. Telling me we're facing the same challenges and writing, thank you for talking on those topics that exactly the topics that I'm dealing with and the same things that you're saying happen to me. Everyone, you can see those comments. It's, 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 it's uh, uh, public on, you, on the YouTube comments and the Facebook comments and the website that we have place for comments. You're going to see people feel the same. People feel that they are being bullied by society. By people. If it's by rabbis, it's not important. I'm not talking against Judaism ever. I never, never speak about the Torah. Never, ever say anything bad against Hashem. I'm only warning from people that are sabotaging and destroying our self-esteem and the real basic understanding of who we are. Against people, I'm fighting all the way. On people that are twisting the Torah. On people that are twisting who Hashem is and describing Hashem in a foreign way. And making the good creator and the kind creator, the creator that, is, that he taught Moses how to be humble. The creator that revealed his, his, his essence, his light to the world. That opened the path for us to make wonders in the world. And he himself is going through all of those humiliations. And he himself is going through all the destruction of our souls, what that we're going through. Because he's experiencing our sorrow. But he designed and created the world in a certain way that he will be attached to us. And that we will be those messengers that will describe him and bring and deliver him to the world. And he is a Melech Asur Berhatim. He is a king that is chained to our mind. To our way of thinking. And when we're thinking wrong, so he's being described wrong. He's being delivered wrong down to the world. And then people cannot know him. And you can go and talk to people about Hashem. And they will be an FFBs from, from, from birth, religious from birth, for generations. And they don't have the basics. And they don't understand anything about Hashem. 
and they know all the rules and all the regulations and all the halachot and the thinnest and tiniest digduke halachot. Everything they know. They know on every crumb what you should do with it halachically by the rules of Judaism halacha. They know all the rules, so to speak, but they don't know how to behave and they don't have manners and they don't know how to smile and they don't know how to love and they don't know how to deal with their emotions and they don't know how to hold themselves when they're angry and they for sure don't know how to raise children and they in the end really won't find the right way how to say also the psak of the halacha when they will come to tell you what you need to do they will not deliver the right answer to you why? because they're missing the soul of the Torah they miss the, the amazing, fantastic device that is not connected, no wiring, no electricity, no life in it. What can you do with it? Watch your papers not to fly in the wind. Amazing, amazing phone you have. You bought a Macintosh, a laptop, and new, the last, like, last edition. Amazing, not disconnected from, from electricity. What can you do with it? Keep your papers not to fly. That's the only thing you can do. What else can you do with it if you don't have energy, if you don't have power, if you don't have life in it? Nothing. It's worthless. It's a piece of metal, piece of plastic. You can watch over your papers not to fly in the wind. When you take out the intention, when you take out the good, when you take out the spirit of the Creator, when you take out the spirit of Mashiach that is coming to revive the souls, that is coming to wake up and give strength to those poor ones, to the weak ones, to those ones that fell to sadness, to despair, to, to, to depression, that is healing the sick. If you lost your compassion, if you lost your, your love, if you lost your, your patience to people, your sensitivity, your power of understanding, your, your compassion, if you lost your generosity, if you became to be an animal, a predator in the religious world, can watch the papers not to fly. Okay, he's in charge on the Gemarot in the Beit Midrash. Oh yeah, he is in charge on the library, on the bookcases. Great! Because really more than that he cannot do. Why? Because he doesn't have the energy, he doesn't have the power. You need to bring someone with soul to teach something that is spiritual. And when other people that don't have that soul, that doesn't carry that light of Hashem inside of them, people that are disconnected to themselves, to their soul, to their source of life, that they are emotionally crippled, they're not able to provide the right answer and to teach the right guiding of Hashem. Even if they remember all the books by heart. You need to have such a heart to contain Hashem. You need to purify your heart. You need to care. If you're able to ignore your wife, to ignore your children, to ignore your surroundings, to ignore people that in, uh, in need. I spoke to a woman a few weeks ago. She told me about crisis, financial crisis that she went through in life. And she sat with rich people, with millionaires, sat with them. And with tearing eyes, asking for a loan, asking for help. And she felt from those people, you're going to say she's sensitive, you're going to say whatever you want. She felt rejected, she felt humiliated, she felt like they now suffer from their meat spending, need to discuss her financials. Afraid for the money terrified from the situation that they will be forced somehow to take out money from their pockets, money that they don't use, money that they won't use in 1,000 years from now. You have such rich people, such wealthy people that are so stuck in poverty, their mind is so poor that they don't even enjoy their own money. They don't enjoy the money, and their children don't enjoy their money. And the, and the fact, no one can, t money is, is off the table. Not talking about money. Why? Because we're rich. Crazy. Can be something more sick than that? A wealthy family, a rich family, they have piles of money, they can buy buildings. Money is not an issue. Cannot talk about money. Why? Because you're cheap. Because the landlord is cheap. 
<laughs> because that person is cheap and cruel and doesn't want no one to touch his money. So money is higher in importance from, his, from souls, from people, from his children, from his wife. That she is desperate for, more, for, warm, for warmth, for love, for support, for kindness. She's dying. She's dying on the Shabbos table. And you don't care. Why you don't care? Because you're self-centered. Because you care only about yourself. And now you want to go and to represent Hashem. And to claim that you know why. And that the blessing of Hashem brought you the money. It's not a blessing. It's a curse. All that wealth that you're holding in your hands, it's your punishment in the world to come. You won't be blessed for that wealth. The reason that those poor outside of your house are still poor is because that you're cheap. You will be punished on not giving charity to all those people. You're going to go and in heaven you're going to try to complain why all those poor came to your house and you're going to be punished on every single one of them that have not received the money that was belonged to him and been deposited to your gigantic bank account. And Hashem will put every person in his place. When I left the yeshiva that I was learning a few years ago, I was facing a very hard situation over there. And some situation that were many rabbis were involved in that situation and many things that happened over there were not in the right way, were not honest. And I remember standing and thinking to myself, what people gonna do in the world to come? People that are pretending to be the servants of Hashem. People that are pretending to be righteous. People that are pretending to be holy. And you don't know who I'm talking about. I'm talking about those people that I'm talking about. You don't need to imagine to yourself, oh, it's this, it's that. Don't think about people. Think about the situation. People that are claiming and pretending to be servants of Hashem and they themselves are allowing themselves to abuse other people, to take advantage of other people based on their power, based on the authority that has been given to them from heaven. They will be punished on those things. No one can go out clean in front of the Creator in trial if the person that been abused, that been hurt, is still hurt. If they haven't paid back their debt. No one in heaven is going to forgive a person if he hurt someone that have not forgiven yet. If you hurt someone and that person is still broken, no heaven court will judge him favorably if you haven't forgotten that and if you haven't forgiven him yet. If you're carrying those scars and your heart is still bleeding, something needs to be done here. In heaven they cannot forgive him if you never for forgave. And it's scary. Because in the end everyone will stand and will face the truth. The truth will be seen. If you were a thief, if you had a desire for that person's money, if you had foreign thoughts, if you were scared for your own success and that's why you went and destroyed someone, you will face it. Hashem will let you and all of the surrounding in court in the world to come the opportunity to hear the voice of your thoughts. The fears that brought you to sin against that person will be heard in heaven's court. Sof davar, finally, hakol nishma, everything will be heard. Now, why I don't have a problem with that? Why me? You think I never sinned in my life? I sinned. I sin many times in my life. Why well, don't have a problem that all of my shames and my, my, my lackings will be heard in heaven? Because I am confessing and I'm able to apologize on all of my mistakes. I'm going and doing that thing daily, 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 on a daily basis. I'm not scared and not afraid and not ashamed to apologize to my children that I hurt them. And you can ask them. I'm not ashamed to go and to apologize to my wife. And when my wife, she rebukes me, I am I'm admitting if she's right and she's telling me something and I can recognize that thing, I'm telling her, you're right, I'm sorry. And if it happens in front of our children and if it happens in front of our guests, 
I'm still standing and apologizing to my wife on hurting her feeling. And if a student of mine or a follower or I don't know who, someone in the street. Yesterday we went to, uh, uh, to, to, to we, 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 walk, we walked, we went to Costco. We're walking in Costco, my wife and I. And, a per, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm pushing this, uh, how you call that? A cart? Carriage. Carriage. What? Carriage. Different neighborhoods, different accents already. So divided. What's going to sit together? Come. <laughs> sit over there. And I, you know, I, I parked it in the, in the, in the, in the, um, I say Mavav, in the, 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 the on the way. No, I, I just, I stopped in the middle when people are walking. I wasn't paying attention. I didn't stop on the side. I stopped in the middle. And someone came and started screaming at me. Why? You can't stop like that. You need to put it aside. I told him, I'm sorry. First word came out of my, my mouth. I told him, I'm sorry. He said, your apologies doesn't help me. Move to the side. I told him, okay. I am moving to the side. And I'm just saying to you, I'm sorry. He said, it doesn't help. I told him, okay, but I can tell you, I am sorry if I made a mistake and accidentally stop in the middle of your way and now I move to the side and I can apologize to you and tell you I'm sorry. You need to explain yourself and you don't need to be scared. He's crazy and he wants to complain and he wants to scream and you can apologize. Nothing happened if you will apologize. He doesn't want you to apologize. Why? Because he just wants to scream. But you need to be who you are. And if you feel that you made something go, really, I didn't pay attention. I can apologize to you. No, you don't want to accept my apology. Okay, so go. So don't take my apology, but I allow to apologize to you. I'm forcing people to accept my apologies. I'm just trying to be who I am. If I made a mistake, I don't have a problem. Even that person that tried to hustle us today and to take $50, I told him, listen, if I damaged your car, in the end we saw it wasn't his car, someone else came and drove the car <laughs> and went. But in reality, if I really hurt you, I'll, I'll pay back. Whatever I need to do, I'll do. No problem. If I really damaged, also damaged and also don't want to pay, also damaged and don't want to apologize. So that's a rasha, that's an evil person. At least I'm not evil. Maybe I'm not righteous, but at least I'm not evil. If I made something wrong, if I twisted something, I'll be honest and I'll apologize and I'll, be, I'll, I'll, I'll take responsibility on my action. And when you're doing that, when you go with that attitude that you understand that you might fail, that you can fail, you're a person, you're a human being. Your flesh and bone can fail, you can forget, you can be distracted, you can for not, not paying attention. Some mistakes, can, failures can happen to you. If you understand that and you're being honest and mature about it and you're able to confess and to say I'm sorry, to apologize, so then it brings you to that place that you're healing the world, that you're fixing. That you're fixing everything. And then you don't need to be scared of heaven's trial. Because you already did tshuva. They're not even going to judge you on things that you did tshuva on those things already. If you did tshuva and you confessed and you fixed it, there's nothing to judge you on. But if you're hiding your sins and pretending all the time to be righteous and also claiming to be even in a higher level than you are because you, dis you, you live based on the, on the fake honor that you're receiving and demanding from everyone surrounding you. So in that case, you're in a problem. You're in a big, big problem. Now those people that are going in the world and claiming to be righteous and claiming to be the servants of Hashem and claiming to have knowledge and to teach and to preach and to guide other people, they are destroying the souls of their followers. They're penetrating that darkness, that sadness, that desire for honor, those angers that they are still infected by into the hearts of their followers and they're spreading darkness in the world instead of spreading light. Instead of spreading light. Someone sent to me a, a WhatsApp picture that is saying, 
in the nine days of the month of Av, people are being careful not to eat meat for, because of the memory for the destruction, but they're not being careful not to destroy each other, that this is the reason why the temple been destroyed in the first place. Not working on ourselves, not being nice. And like, okay, ate meat, didn't ate meat. You think it matters so much? You think that this is what that matters in heaven? If you ate meat or haven't ate meat? If you took another shower, you didn't took another shower? If you brushed your teeth or you haven't? If you wore something that is new or you haven't? If you forgot that? You think that on that day going to make a big deal in heaven with you? You think that Hashem is crazy? You think that Hashem is crazy? Who do you think Hashem is? You think Hashem is a radical rabbi from, 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 um, what's the name of this place? No, Monsi. Monsi, everyone in a bubble. Many oh. Lakewood, Lakewood, I want to say. You think Hashem is a rabbi in Lakewood? Shem is not a rabbi in Lake from Lakewood. Hashem is the spirit of creation. Hashem is the good and positive light of, 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 of creation. Hashem is the source of life. Hashem is the source of, of light. Hashem is the good itself. Hashem is infinity. Hashem is the grace in the eyes of deers, of animals that are walking. Hashem is the green color in trees. Hashem is the bright blue in the sky. Hashem are the wonderful clouds. Hashem is the rain that is watering the grass. That the flowers are blooming in His power. Hashem is in your heart. Hashem is your hope. Hashem is your, 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 your encouragement. Hashem is the spirit. Hashem is the, the spirit. Ruach Elohim merachefet al penehamayim is the spirit of God that is hovering above the water of Torah. Above the water of Torah. That everyone that is thirsty can drink. Why not to say that Hashem is the water of Torah? Hashem's spirit, before you come to drink, the wave of Hashem, the, sp the spirit of Hashem is already reviving you. Before you come to drink, you already enjoy the sight of that glass of water. A thirsty person, he see the faucet, he see the refrigerator, he see the bottle of water, already he feels a relief. That's Hashem. That's where Hashem starts. Hashem starts where your nose finish. Hashem starts when you become alive. When you open your eyes, Hashem. Hashem is the source of life. Hashem is the essence of creation. Hashem is the reason that you're surviving, that you're holding on. Hashem is the smiles of your children. Hashem is the hope and the encouragements between friends that are sitting together. Hashem is the good vibes in the conversation that people are talking and finding good advice. Hashem is, a, is, a, is an amazing meal that family are sitting together and celebrating holidays or, or, or birthdays or, or any event. This is Hashem. Hashem is over there. Hashem is in the end of that bookcase. Hashem is only if you finish the 50th volume of that book. No. Hashem was not born and raised in Lakewood. No, Hashem is not an FFP. Hashem was here before of creation. Hashem was here before of time. Hashem put His beauty into the creation when Adam and Eve were walking naked in heaven. Oh, we're not talking about that, right? Not, not really naked. No, they were naked. They were walking naked in the garden. What about modesty? What about modesty? I'm going to ask you that question. Deal with that question, right? In heaven, Hashem ideally wanted Adam and Eve to walk naked in heaven, even if in the future they'll have children. They were about to have children in the future, even if they wouldn't sin, right? And he didn't give them no, no, no gift cards to go shopping. There was no clothing. He gave them the leather outfits, coverings, only after they sinned, because they didn't have a way to cover themselves over there, outside of heaven. When they walked out to this world that is hell, they had to cover themselves. But ideally, when people are innocent, when people are pure, Hashem doesn't have a problem with them even going naked. Deal with that. 
You can't deal with it? It's your problem. No, why not? Your Hashem is not firm enough for you, right? Hashem is not religious enough, right? Hashem is not righteous enough. No, no, no. You don't understand what you're talking about. Okay, great. I don't understand, but I'm happy. I don't understand, but I have thousands of people that relate to my message, and I am not going away from the mainstream of Judaism. I'm walking by the rules of Halakha. I'm keeping Shabbat exactly like the Shulchan Aruch is saying. I'm keeping Kashrut exactly like the Shulchan Aruch is saying. Exactly. I'm fulfilling my obligation to Hashem completely. I'm doing as much as I can. If it's in money issues, if it's in charity, if it's in raising and educating my kids on, 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 on the path of Torah. If it's in the holidays, if it's in all aspects of life, guarding our eyes and watching our mouths and dedicating our life to, to, to Torah and Mitzvot, what are we doing? But we're doing all of what we're doing out of love and out of a good will to commit ourselves to the will of Hashem. And not because we're being terrorized by other people. Not because we must and not because we're afraid not to. We're not afraid of anything. When we feel that we made something wrong, that we violated something, that we messed up, we know how to fix with the tshuva. And we're asking Hashem to fix and to give us the power to fix and to do whatever it takes to fix. And even if it means to break, our, break ourselves and if it means to apologize and even if it means to pay, whatever it takes. When we realize that we made something wrong, we're fixing it as much as we can. And that's why we're not afraid. The Torah is saying, People were scared, even in Zion, the most protected place, that the supervision of Hashem was over there. People were protected over there, surrounded with love over there. They were scared because they were sinning. People, when they're sinning, they are scared. You're afraid and you're scared because you are sinning. You're sinning. Check yourself. When you feel bad, check yourself. Why do I feel bad? If you're getting scared from something, ask yourself, what have I done that that fear now is attacking me? And don't say, oh, I remember 20 years ago I ate treif. Don't say, oh, when I was secular, I was violating Shabbat. No, no, no. Don't make up stories. If now you're scared of your wife, or now you're scared to be stuck with no money, or now you're scared from that police officer, check yourself why now you're scared. What now, one second ago, you had in your mind that brought that police officer to attack you, so to speak. Your wife to terrify you. Your financials to make you so worried. Where are you holding? What are you hiding? With what you're not dealing? What are you denying? Ask yourself the truth. Confront your fears and then take responsibility on the reason why you are sinning. Why you? Look at your own eyes. Check yourself and fix yourself. Take responsibility. You talked bad on someone. You did something wrong. You were looking on foreign things. You were not clean. You had negative thoughts. You were self-centered. You were selfish. You took care of yourself. You didn't care about him. You, you disrespected him. You were mocking him. Something was wrong with you. And this is why Hashem now, in the present, chose to wake you up. To terrify you. To make you aware to your level that you will find the ability to fix. It's not a punishment. It's a wake-up call. So let it, let it penetrate. Let it call you. Answer to that call. It's terrifying you. Deal with it. Now I was scared. Go deal with that fear. The tshuva. Hashem, why? Why I was so worried. I remember you always helped me. Why now I was so terrified? What's going on? Please answer me. Please guide me. Please give me the ability to deal with my truth. With the truth that I'm afraid to see. I want to see the truth, the real truth. 
What am I doing that is so wrong? What am I doing that is destroying? Men are complaining, hating, blaming their wives on not being happy when they are commanded to make their wives happy. And he's blaming his wife on being depression. And you're the reason, because you're appointed on her happiness. Hashem put you in charge to make her happy. You must make her happy. Now she is sad and depressed and broken, and you're blaming her on it. Okay, nice. Why don't you blame Hashem on the fact you don't have money if Hashem is in charge on supporting you and giving you money? Why are you doing tshuva and trying to fix yourself when you're broke? Blame Hashem. Hashem don't give me, doesn't give me money. Blame Him. No, because Hashem commanded you to make sure certain things are right. And He told you that if you will fulfill your obligation, He will deliver the bounty and you won't lack a thing. So you take responsibility. Now why when your wife she is sad, you're not taking full responsibility on that? She is sad. Make her happy. Because you don't want to make her happy. You want her to make you happy. So you choose to be the female in the house and you want her to treat you with honor when you're commanded to honor her. She's not commanded to honor you. It's not written in the Shulchan Aruch. She's not commanded to work and to supply money. So you cannot complain on her that she's not working. In the rules of Torah, Shulchan Aruch. She's not commanded on anything. What she is commanded on Derech Eretz. She needs to follow the rules of Hashem. She needs to have faith. Okay, now you see a person with no faith. You need to help him to grow. Now you're going to blame her on not having faith? People need to be friends with each other. People need to care about each other. Your wife, she's sad. Your friends, he's sad. It's the same. Remind yourself that you are here to help, that you are here to provide, that you are here to care, to help and to support. And if you don't care and you just want to receive to yourself, so at least don't blame other people. If you're blaming other people, you, you, you just become evil. And, and, and you're going you, you gonna to be must judged on, on those mistakes. Must. Because if you don't take responsibility and you just like roll the ball to the next person, it's not fair. I think it's very important that we're going to understand the importance of who we are and how much power we received from the Creator in our hands to go and to spread good in the world. And not to be so greedy all the time, to try to take for ourselves and to take advantage of situations for our own benefits. If we as people that claims to serve Hashem and, and to claim to love Hashem are not really anxious to, to keep His will and to be human and to be nice and to be kind, how can we come in any complaint to some other person? First of all, kshot atzmechat chila. You need to check yourself first. Check kshot in Aramaic. It means judge yourself with the eye of truth. Kshot means truth. You need to check yourself where really you're holding. That's what you need to check. Not judge yourself, criticize yourself. No. Really where are you holding? Really what are you hiding? Really where are you not taking responsibility? Really what can you do and you're not doing? Really where are you not sensitive and you choose to be selfish? Really check yourself first. Okay. Okay. I also give private classes, so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.